Hello and welcome to my channel. Go ahead, hit the like, hit the share, subscribe if you haven't already. Isn't it interesting how some of these celebrities, you can say this, you can say that about them, and no one will say nothing. Oh, but I was supposed to take interest in all these people who have sat by quietly as Robert Kelly has been assassinated publicly. The irony, the same BBC interviewer who did his interview with Nature Boy, who everybody has been talking about and blasting for years, switched his narrative and started to make his cult stories blend in with the allegations against Robert Kelly. And then we saw all these celebrities who have been around this man all these decades talking about what they heard but didn't see get quiet. Oh, but a few stood up for Robert Kelly. And even though their reputation ain't squeaky clean, it don't take a genius to recognize some of these people who came to the internet trying to desperately prove their points, handed over so much information that they could have kept to themselves. But I'll get to that a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Can I hear with you? What? ACP, do you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, Levi for Kelly, Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the talk. Look. You got some weed? Dang. Gotta get some. Alright, hurry up. These are them here, everybody here. We waiting on you. Alright. <laughs> People wanted to overlook the obvious things I pointed out early on and how all these people wanted to come to YouTube and put all this information out there even though the whole time you had Tim Savage out here running around with this bat losing his damn mind didn't you mean people have nothing to say. When this case became federal, in my opinion, a whole lot of gag orders should have been issued. But as we saw, people were allowed to put so-called evidence on display. Meanwhile, if I tell you that I have verifiable information that would outline a lot of fraudulent activity and all these people keep coming to these platforms talking about money 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 and i tell you that the internal conflict between these individuals in the background has nothing to do with me and or the facts i intend to bring to my channel it should be very clear these people continuously coming to these platforms are trying to prove points for specific agendas and despite all the voice notes all the little recorded calls I've heard, all the bank accounts sent to me, all the private information of R. Kelly sent to me, I remain adamant in showing to you all these things. Why, you might ask? Because clearly by coming on my platform, I could say anything. But my intent was always to back up what I say with information that I hold. Am I going to put all the information on YouTube? Obviously not. Am I going to elaborate on certain points on YouTube? Obviously not. But I am going to make this shit make sense for you real quick so it can set in to the fraud we've been watching all these goddamn years. And guess who not going to care who get mad? Me. Because I've been telling y'all for the longest what's really going on. And while all these people thinking they could hide behind these fake ass beefs, we peep game over here. What's up? What's up, man? How you doing? This you L.A.? L.A., is this you? I, I'm, I'm trying to hold it down, you know. I got my lawyers, uh, Bill Cosby got a, a, a couple lawyers on my team. And uh, I'm just trying to beat it, man, you know. I got a CD coming out called It Ain't Over. Uh, you know, I really can't talk about too much of the case, but uh, how you living out there, man? <laughs> Now it became clear to me that a lot of people who support Robert Kelly 
and are fans of Robert Kelly don't know too much about Rico's because a lot of the things that have been brought to my platform over the last few years and the things that I've observed on these public platforms are the reason why when I give you my opinion, I'm painting the picture as to all of the things I've seen in the background on my screen. Now with that said, if you don't have the common sense to recognize that everything that I display to you is the fact that people within the background have been jumping from platform to platform with these narratives that make absolutely no sense in the midst of this open investigation. And the more I try to make that obvious to people who might not know what a RICO is, it is organizing criminal activity. Therefore, if you listen to these people continuously implicate this man in conversations, in letters, and things like that, and the government is putting out there he's having secret phone calls, people are slipping him little letters and things like that, do you really think it's wise to play all this stuff out on the internet and then get mad when people with logical sense show you all the things these people engaged in which affected this case. So what does that tell you? All of these narratives, all these lives you have witnessed, I have heard these exact same stories over and over. Different people bringing me the same bullshit that I shut down and tell you I'm only going to verify information that is put out through the attorneys and it's obvious why when I display in the background how unreliable and sketchy these individuals are who throw each other under the bus in all these lives they participate in and then try to throw your focus off on people who have absolutely nothing to do with the case to avoid the common sense that I've told you for three freaking years. So let me run it back for the people that are slow. Clearly, Cash Jones showed us how easy it was to infiltrate this man's camp, to infiltrate his support team, and cause so much internal conflict. And then people who don't research and fact check the information brought to them end up sticking their foot in their mouth. And instead of coming out and telling you they fucked up, they engage in all this other criminal activity continuously put these suspect ass individuals next to this man and then the general public fails to realize what I've said from day one that the way these people have associated themselves and lined themselves up it doesn't matter what they get on their platforms and say every day when at the end of the day if you're saying that you believe this man is innocent regardless what these people continuously say People should have been focusing on these civil rights violations, the fact that these so-called witnesses have been allowed to get on these platforms and run amok. And then the government try to present their case as though Robert Kelly has any control over these damn fans doing the most when they don't want to face the facts head on, just like some of these people who hate Robert Kelly so much that they will bypass all the information that was clearly and readily available as they push their propaganda. Then we see all these people who could have had good intentions at the beginning put all this information out there. We see it go left and these people want you to believe this man has all these goons in the background who wouldn't address Tim Savage from day one waving that damn bat. And what the slow people don't recognize is some of these individuals have been using these interviews and other associations to verify their information and make themselves look credible when at the end of the day it doesn't change the fact that nobody in their right mind would overlook all this weird ass behavior when it comes to this case when you look at other cases you see they're tight-lipped when it comes to putting out information that they say is evidence but when you see these people they did the most tried to scam so many people and then get mad when they get cut out the scams i would also expect that you would provide me with that information so i can see who's trying to do fraud in the client's name Again, my name is Doug Anton. 
My phone number is 201-487-2055. I welcome your phone call at any time to discuss this issue so we can clear it up. And I can make sure if you did send a check, I can assist you in any way to get that money back. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye. What's crazy is that people think that I'm going to go back and forth with these people on the internet who ain't got common sense to know that if you want to mislead a YouTube audience, that's your prerogative. But when you begin to interfere with a federal case, taunting witnesses, involving yourself with the attorneys, turning them against each other, involving them in fraud and all kind of bullshit... I don't know what to tell these type of people who don't have common sense. Now, clearly, I said from day one, I don't have a law degree. I'm not a journalist, and I'm not trying to build a defense on YouTube. But at the end of the day, all these people to sit around watching my content, trying to give their opinions, had all the opportunity to look up case laws, as the government did, to validate all of these informational pieces that I have put out there to let you know this man's rights have been violated. But they're too preoccupied shooting shots involving people that ain't got nothing to do with nothing while trying to manipulate the facts. When at the end of the day, as I said a long time ago, if you wait to the end of the trial, a lot of these people would be irrelevant considering I'm not the one out here chasing these stories trying to be the first. I'm more interested in being accurate with what I do bring to you. Such as now, Jennifer Bone Jean says she will be filing her opposition to the government April the 4th. But again, some people fail to recognize that the same problems that Robert Kelly is having, a lot of people have faced every single day. And unfortunately, they don't have fans or supporters to bring light to the corruption. So just a little common sense to me, instead of getting wrapped up in all these people's personal problems, let's breathe life into the person that you claim to support, as I said long ago. It's time people who support Robert Kelly put more focus in changing the narrative instead of allowing them to keep painting this picture he's a monster when he's absolutely the opposite. But what do I know? I can only go off the interviews that professionals put out there who weren't trying to stir the pot. <laughs> Okay, you tell me. Okay, now we wait for a bit of silence. Okay, so you finally made it to Paris. So how was it? Oh man, it was unbelievable. Just unbelievable. It was a lot of love, and um, I'm ready to go back out and do it again if I could. And, and is being on stage what you prefer in your job, or do you prefer being in the studio? Or? No, I prefer being on stage. You know, because that's where you get to show and prove, and you know. You know, a lot of people be in the studio, but when they get out on the stage, it's a whole other thing, you know, but I want to show fans that this is real, you know, I'm real about what I do, mm -hmm. yeah. Because uh, I read lots of articles about you, and they were all saying that you spent all night in studios recording and recording and recording. So Believe it. Believe it. Okay. Yeah. I love the studio. Um, there's no place uh, like home, and, and studio is the uh, place for me. And, and because you do everything you write, you produce your, your albums. So why is that? You're like a total control freak, you're a work colleague. Uh, how, how do you work? Like, do you work? Well, it's just that I'm not afraid, you know. Um, I started out just singing. And once, I was scared to even do that. But once I got out on stage for the first time in my talent show in high school, and uh, all the ladies started screaming, I'm like, yo, man, it gave me such a confidence. It was almost like... Peter Pan getting bit by the spider. He became Spider-Man after that, you know. And it was like, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm, you know, I'm going to try whatever I can try and see what else I can do. And I just tried to produce, tried to do tracks. And I ended up being able to do it, you know. So I just kept trying things. So that's how I ended up pretty much doing all of the things that I do. Mm -hmm. So you've always wanted to be a, a singer, a performer? Or did, did you want to be a basketball player? Uh, what was your dream uh, as a child? Well, my dream um, as a child and coming up all the way to I was like 16 and 17 was being the next Michael Jordan, hopefully. But um, um, 
unfortunately, that, that didn't happen. You know, um, I had to get a grade in uh, high school, uh, so I had to do music to get a grade. You know, so uh, during that time I was doing mu mu music and I did the talent show, I became incredibly interested because the girls weren't screaming for me when I was on the basketball court, but they screamed for me when I was uh, doing music and I just fell in love with that love that I felt. And how would you define your music, your style? Um, do you think you're pure R&B or how would you define it? Um, well, something so versatile and something so different, it's hard to really dissect and define. I'm just, I just flow with it, you know. I'm, I just, I've never been able to explain um, not one song, uh, how it really happens, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, I'm just thankful to God that I have this talent because it feels good to be able to um, express yourself musically and then watch the whole world react to it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a little bit of rap, but you, you are able to sing ballads too, so it's a mix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you, you work with a lot of uh, great stars, you, you talked about it just now, mm -hmm. uh, and of course I would like to know how is it to work with Michael Jackson? Oh, it's an incredible feeling uh, to work with anybody. I mean, it's like you, you know, that you've grown up listening to from a from a kid, you know. And um, I kind of grew up, uh, I grew up listening to Michael Jackson, and of course, like you and everybody else, all his hits. And uh, to be able to go into the studio and really, really um, listen to some, uh, be able to write for someone that I've listened to for so long. Um, it was incredibly easy because I was so excited to do it and wanted to do it and do the best job that I could possibly do for that mission, you know, that, uh, uh, and then when I met him, it was, he's such a regular guy and everybody else think he's uh, different or whatever, but he's just a regular guy, you know, and um, at least that's how he treated me, so, you know, um, that's how we were able to come up with a great song like You Are Not Alone. So it's really invincible for you. Huh? He's really invincible. Is that mm. the, the title? Yeah. He's really convincing to me, you mm. know. Okay. And how do you choose uh, people you work with? Uh, did they choose you, or did you choose them? Huh? Yeah, I'm called. I'm called on, um, on, and um, and I definitely answer, you know, because I'm at my best when I'm wanted, you know. When people, when I feel like they want me, that's when I'm pretty much at my best, because I feel like okay, the challenge is on. I have to deliver, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've got to t talk about your lyrics because I mm -hmm. read them carefully. Mm -hmm. And everybody thinks you're such a romantic guy and everything, but oh. you talk a lot about sex. I do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, why is that? You're really direct and. Um, well, sex is a form of art to me. It's not just sex. It's, you know, a lot of people have their opinions of what sex is, but those people were born by sex. And that's how you're able to even give an opinion. You have to be born. And you're born because somebody laid down and had sex. <laughs> you know, some people call it making love. And to some people, it is making love. Some people is just having sex, and some people is just straight boning. However, you know, someone was born f from that um, great moment in that room or wherever you were. And I'm one of those people. I just happen to uh, know how to appreciate sex. and and know how to um, express myself when I'm feeling like I want to be sexual, you know, and, and by me being an artist, um, I love making love, you know, and I love writing about making love, and that's my character, and um, I don't think anybody should down it because of that reason, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm not afraid to talk about it or sing about it. Mm -hmm. And um, you seem to, do you write especially your songs for women, because there's a lot of girls in your audience, uh, because you seem to, to know women very well, actually, mm -hmm. in some of your songs. Well, yeah, I, I feel like I do know women. I've had um, enough relationships um, um, and experience with, with women to um, know what they feel, you know, because um, a lot of things that women feel that, that they've been through, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the guys that took them through it, and um, a lot of times my songs are um, like, in a way, is saying, I'm sorry. Um, I like to look at a woman's threat uh, as an apology. 
song. You know, I look at um, When a Woman's Fed Up as an apology song. And I try to represent all men and sing that song to all women. So when men hear that song, they'd be like, man, that's what I've been trying to say. And, uh, and a woman goes, wow, that's what, that's what you need to be telling me, you know. And um, that's what I try to create, you know, relationships. You know, a lot of people write songs about just the beautiful things, but um, there's a lot of relationships that are not going so well. And I try to hit on those subjects. But your, your last album is, uh, is very sensual, of course, but it's also nostalgic, I think, and sometimes mystical. Mm -hmm. um, is, is it what it's all about? R. Kelly, is that the message? Is it uh, mm -hmm. everything? Well, as I said earlier, um, this TP2.com album is about being versatile, you know, and um, I like to write from life's experiences. Sometimes I might feel um, up and sometimes I might feel down. And um, sometimes I feel, uh, most of the time, romantic. You know, I like to um, take words and um, mess around with the words and um, search myself and go inside myself and figure out how can I put this word into a, a melody and make people overseas feel it and agree. You know, and um, it's, it becomes such a challenge to me. And um, that I'm actually inspired by the challenge itself mm -hmm. to do it. And image is really important too um, when we look at your videos and everything. So how much are you involved in, in videos and, and your image and how you look? 200%. 200%. I believe that um, visuals uh, meet the music and they, they have to fall in love and get married. You know, I, I feel like that and they have to be married forever, forever. Because um, if you have a, a song that says, go that way, and then in, in, the, in the visual say, go that way, then people are going to be confused as they listen and look. You know, and that's what I try to do. I try to make the song and the, and the video and you know, the visuals go the same way and, and be married. Is that why you direct uh, the videos yourself? That's exactly why. I'm just glad I'm able to. You know, everybody's not able to do it. I'm just glad I'm able to be able to, um, you know, to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And last question. If you have to choose um, between God, women, basketball, and music, what would you choose? No doubt God. Could you explain us why? Because God, God is all those things. God is my music. God is uh, our women. He's me. He's everything. And you have to really understand that to be able to appreciate that, you know. And um, no, no one can give me God, but God could give me everyone. Okay, that's yeah. a good answer. Thank Thanks. you very much. All right. Thank you. Is it? Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it.